This is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Akery. Luke, bad habits come in all shapes and sizes, but one thing is consistent about them. We are constantly wishing that we could change them, even when we know that what we habitually do is not making us better we still fall back into the same old routines that ultimately lead us nowhere. So today, we're going to talk about where habits come from, the pattern that all habits follow, and how to break them and replace the bad habits with better ones. Yes, I need some help with this. Do you? Yeah, because we, yeah, I was listening to, and I told you about this, I was listening to this YouTube video. From I feel like guy, you have like some of the Alex, best habits of anyone I know. I know, but what's interesting there is this is what this guy said, Alex Hermosi, he, he puts out great content. He was an entrepreneur. He started like four or five companies. Um, he's in the fitness space. And he said something about habits that really impacted me. He said, you'll see all these fitness influencers because he was in the fitness place. Yeah. And it, they're, they're like bragging about how disciplined they are. And they get up and <laughs> you know, go to the gym at 4 a.m. And he looked at them and he, he basically said, they're not disciplined. Mm. They just have found something in their life mm -hmm. that they enjoy. And they enjoy going to the gym, just like you enjoy playing music or you enjoy playing soccer or you enjoy cooking. Nobody has to tell you to do it. You enjoy it. But you take that same fitness influence or same fitness person and try to put them into something that actually requires discipline and they fail. And he says, that's the difference between a true entrepreneur and somebody who's just enjoying a habit that they're bent towards or, yeah, the they, they have a bend is towards. The difference. So my point yeah. with that being is I love business. Yeah. So I have a natural bend towards it. So I-, I Well, do you I, love waking I, up at 4 a.m. in the morning? I don't. Now, I've been forcing myself to do that. Okay. So, but the, well, not- Quite four, four fifteen is when 4 my first first alarm goes off. Okay, four fifteen a.m. Wait, but, you hit the snooze button? No, the snooze button is the killer of dreams. Well, dude. you said the first alarm. Yeah, how many alarms no, do you have? First, oh well, I have like seven alarms. Just in case you miss one. Yeah. Okay, but like, you don't I hit the snooze. A, I have a four fifteen, four twenty. There's no snooze on Apple, is there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I always minutes. hit stop it. Okay, good for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, that's nine minutes. I'll use but, that as an example here. People, I, the but here's my ultimate point is. I think about my habits and I go, man, I want to develop better habits like in our content creation or better habits. And I'm just like, I'm a disciplined person. But when it comes to some things, my <laughs> wife tells me I have an on and off switch. I'm either on or I'm off. <laughs> well, hey, it's important to kind of understand where habits come from. I mean, a lot of this is pretty obvious, but a habit is just a fixed way of thinking that leads to automatic behavior. The benefit is that we don't have to rethink what to do again and again. It just happens. So it's an evolutionary sort of tool in our toolbox from the standpoint of we don't have to spend time thinking about doing it over and over again. It just naturally triggers in our brain and that habit ultimately gets created what uh, to what is important to understand is every habit, because I mentioned this idea that it follows a certain pattern. So in the, that pattern is called the habit loop. The habit loop is a neurological loop that governs any habit. The habit loop consists of three elements, a cue, a routine, and a reward. Understanding these elements can help in understanding how to change bad habits or to form better ones. So what that looks like is you have a cue, which is a response to a certain trigger. So okay. let's just use waking up in the morning, right? So your cue is your alarm goes off. Okay. Your routine, so a cue is always followed by a routine. In a bad habit, your routine would be to hit the snooze button. And then you get a reward. That reward is you get to sleep in a little bit longer, mm -hmm. right? So every single habit follows that same exact pattern. I was watching a YouTube video where they used an example of a farmer. And they said, like, Farmer Joe walks to his vegetable garden. Then he walks to his chicken house. Then he walks to his mailbox. Then he walks home. Every single day, he's walking that same path, ultimately to the point where those pathways that he's implanting on his own property – it's the same thing that's happening in your brain. You're actually getting this pathway implanted in your brain. It's almost involuntary. His routine, I think the example is like one day he has a dream and he finds his love of all things living. And so he sets his chicken free. I guess he didn't <laughs> want to keep his chickens <laughs> captive anymore. But what happened is the next morning, Farmer Joe wakes up. He goes and waters his vegetables. The last tomato plant that he waters triggers a, uh, root, uh, uh, triggers a cue. The routine is to go over to the chicken house, even though he doesn't have any chickens, because his reward is to find an egg. So he literally has to create a new habit or a new path, which is what you have to do in order to break a habit. Yeah, that's crazy. One of the examples that uh, it's funny that you brought up fitness, because one of the first things that sort of uh, resonated with me was because a friend had sent me this TikTok was this person who was like, I can't I want to get up in the morning and I want to be healthy. So instead of hearing the alarm, which was the cue. Uh, hitting the snooze button and getting more sleep, which was the routine, and then the reward was getting more sleep, they started hitting, uh, at the sound of the first alarm, 
sat straight up in bed, chugged a glass of water. That was wow. that was their routine. If they uh, did that for a week straight, then they got themselves a reward. I think they bought themselves like a pair of socks. I think they liked socks or something like that. Okay. So they bought themselves a nice gift, and ultimately that was the reward. Once you've done that enough and you continue receiving the benefits of that routine, you will eventually create a new habit. Now, you can always slip back into old habits, but essentially that's how you would— did, disrupt any habit. Did you, uh, in your research, did you see how long it takes to create a habit? Like how long you have to go to that like queue? I've days, but I think it's long. Yeah, I've heard that. 30, I've heard 90, I've heard, I mean, a ton of different yeah. ones. I, I don't know. Like, it's still hard for me to get up early. Yeah. But here's the thing, like on the weekend, sometimes I will sleep into like six. Yep. And I hear that that's really bad. You should stay consistent um, in anything that you do because yeah. it, it messes with the habit yeah. or whatever. Well, I think what happens is so, so, so many people suffer from bad habits, but they don't understand what's triggering them. Yeah. And so once you've been able to identify what is triggering that routine and keep in mind, the routine is the thing that you want to change. So that's sort of the first step, which most people know, okay, I want to stop eating so much, so many sweets. Sure. Right? So once you know that you want to change that routine, then you have to look for the triggers. What is happening? And track this stuff out. Be methodical about it. If you start, if you identify a routine you want to change, track whenever you uh, uh, commit that routine and then think about what triggered that routine. If it's a piece of chocolate, did you smell something? Did you get bored Mm. at your desk? That's a big trigger for a lot of people is boredom because what does boredom do? Boredom uh, is a is a deficiency in dopamine, right? You're not you're not receiving the dopamine. You're not receiving those good feelings, those good chemicals that your brain gives you in anticipation of a reward. Hmm. So, boredom can oftentimes lead to negative habits because you're looking for high stimulus, meaning not negative, overly negative. It might lead to like checking your phone or checking Instagram. Checking your phone is a routine that some people might need to change. The reward or the dopamine hit that you get is. You see a comment on Instagram. Someone messages you. You see a funny piece of video or something like that. So actually lowering those high stimulus activities as well can start to help change some of those bad habits. That's so crazy. So one of the things that you're saying on the triggers, like it reminds me of like one of the most important things to do if you want to change a habit in your life is to change like the environment that you're in. Yes. Because the environment can produce those triggers. The environment controls so much of the outcome of what your life is. Yeah. I think one of the examples that I saw even was this idea of, and again, it's a random example of a, of a movie theater, you know, uh, walking past the popcorn stand, that's your trigger. Your routine is to go buy sweets. Then you go watch the movie, right? Your reward is get to eat the sweets. They said like one thing you can do is instead of buying sweets, buy, uh, salty popcorn or something like that. Maybe it's not as bad for you. Then downgrade once more to fruit. And then if you can't, if you still can't stop it, then stop going to the movie theater. Yep. You've got to cut out the environment you got to, or cut out that trigger. There's another really interesting idea here, and this is going to be a little bit out there. Okay. But there's this idea of dopamine detoxing. So this is, I watched a few it episodes. It sounds like a Simon Sinek thing. Yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So dopamine, like, so to understand kind of a little bit about that, like our bodies are in a constant state of seeking homeostasis, right? We're always trying to seek like a balance. Hmm. That's why whenever you get cold, you shiver, you're trying to warm your body back up to regulate your body temperature to 98 degrees. It makes sense. If it's hot outside, you sweat to cool yourself down. So your body's constantly trying to do that. You can uh, obviously become conditioned or what's the word? Tolerant, right? You can be tolerant to certain levels of things. You can become tolerant to dopamine, meaning you're receiving so much high stimulus from checking your phone, browsing the internet, watching videos, playing video games, that eventually you just need to go more and more and more. You need more and more dopamine to, for your body to, might be to me. maintain homeostasis, <laughs> right? So this idea of dopamine detoxing, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. But one way is to take a day out of the week where you literally cut out all high stimulus activity. So no hmm. phone, no internet, no games, nothing. You can take a walk. You can journal on paper, right? Mm. You can meditate. You can literally pull your body back to the state where it becomes a, it becomes uh, used to boredom hmm. so that it doesn't need as much dopamine. And the example was, think about if you went to a fancy restaurant every single night and then someone were to present you with a bowl of rice. That bowl of rice, white rice, would not look very <laughs> appealing, right? Because you go to a fancy restaurant. Yeah. Now picture yourself that you've been trying to survive on a desert island. 
and someone comes up with a bowl of rice. Yes, and the idea grace. of living on boredom actually makes that bowl of rice. No, is it just one greater. day that you have to start yourself with the dopamine or is it longer? So what I what I was researching was people I'm, will do it. Try that. People will do it one day a week. You can also do lighter versions of it where you simply cut out your phone or something yeah. like that. And then you can also do a daily version of it where you and this is this takes discipline, like what you were saying in the beginning. But for every one hour, let's say this this guy was like, here's how I tricked my brain to enjoy doing hard things. He would take uh, for every one hour of work that he was able to accomplish, he would give himself 15 minutes of high stimulus activity, dopamine producing activity at the end of the day. So if he was able to stack eight hours of work, then he would give himself two hours at the end of the day, but always saving it until the end of the day. And he said he naturally, instead of getting distracted in the middle of the day and checking your phone or doing things like that, he naturally began uh, anticipating and found himself able to focus longer because he'd gotten himself accustomed to the quote unquote boredom. It's so interesting. Or the hard thing that you want to watch. I was um, introduced to that type of uh, concept when I was a software engineer. Yeah. Uh, so I paired program with a software engineer named Brian and paired programming is just when you're sitting there together working on a project and one person takes turns writing the code yeah. and the other person's thinking, right? So I'm sitting there writing the code and he was a huge believer in we work straight for 45 minutes and then okay. we take a five minute break. Okay. I did not enjoy it at all. Really? Yeah, like it did not. To me, it was just like we were just getting in the rhythm. And oh, you felt like you were breaking the flow. Yeah, yeah. like you're breaking the flow. It was super interesting. But this guy, obviously, he was rewarding at the end of the at day. At the end of the day, yeah. But it was the same concept. Like Brian literally worked straight for an hour, hardcore, total focus, and then five minutes relax. <laughs> like, and I want to keep going. He would literally <laughs> lean back in his chair and grab his phone and just start looking at his phone. I'm just like, yeah. dude, dude, come on, let's go. So it's super interesting. So there you go. So that is the habit loop explained. Again, uh, you want to look for that cue that trigger, you want to identify the habit that you want to change, and then you want to set up a different incentive structure or a different mm. reward structure uh, to help change that routine. Thank you so much for listening. You can head on over to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes and the video of this episode. And if you enjoyed this episode and want to support the show, there's two ways we ask you to do it. First is to head on over to P Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review along with a comment. And the best way to help out the show and show support is to share this episode with a friend. I'm going to see if this dad joke is a little better than last week's. <laughs> <laughs> that one was crickets. What do you call a row of men waiting for a haircut? A barbecue. <laughs> that right. one was good. Thank that one was good. Thank you. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. Yeah. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acre, your action item. Implement the habit loop, but specifically, give yourself the reward. You know, that was something in Thinking Grow Rich is like when you create your vision board and you accomplish the things you want, you got to give yourself the reward. If you don't do that, you're not teaching your brain or teaching yourself and giving yourself that dopamine, yep. right, to allow you to form that habit. So think about what you're doing right now, the cold calling, you know, the deals that you want to hit this month, whatever it is, what's the reward you're going to give the, yourself? Implement the habit loop. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers? It's top producers take action. Take action on that today. 